Hello and welcome once more to Red Gaming Tech. My name is Amata. Today is the 9th of October and this time I have some interesting comments from Yoshinori Ono, who is of course the rather legendary Street Fighter producer. And he's given a little bit of interesting insight into how matters are handled within Capcom regarding game sales. Now, in a interview with Famitsu, Ono talked about why games such as Street Fighter X Tekken or Capcom vs SNK may not get a sequel. And he said, quote, That's what I've always been telling the company too. But at the end of the day, there are just some brick walls that a salary man can never overcome. For instance, if a game doesn't sell over 2 million copies, then we'd have to put the brakes on any plans for a sequel. All that means is that we weren't capable enough. All we can do after that is to reflect on the experience, take what we can learn from it, and try to apply those lessons on some other title. Now, you might say, well, that sounds reasonable, but let me give an interesting counterpoint. You may remember, in 2003, there was a little game by the name of Call of Duty. Now, do you know how many units the first title sold? It was actually 1,750,000. That's according to statisticbrain.com, and I will link the website in the description below. So, if Activision had applied Capcom's logic, Call of Duty would never have been a thing. And just to kind of give a little bit of another counterpoint, Call of Duty Ghosts, which of course is the most recent title in the Call of Duty franchise, sold over 14 million copies. And that's not even the best-selling one. We have Black Ops 2 at 24.2, uh, Black Ops the original at 21 million, Modern Warfare 3 at 26 million, Modern Warfare 2 at 23 million. You, you get my point. My point is, it's a little too restrictive. Sometimes it takes a while for a thing to catch on. Like Call of Duty 2 did better, 2.5 million, and then it didn't really come into its own until Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, where it sold 13.5 million copies. So if Activision had had Capcom's logic, well, Call of Duty just wouldn't exist as it does today. So it makes you think, if what if Capcom had perhaps pushed a little harder on some potential franchises. Now, of course, pushing on franchise like that is always a risk. For example, it couldn't have gone this way for Call of Duty. They could have made Call of Duty 2, 3, and 4 or whatever, and it just didn't sell well or sold about as well as the first game. In another alternate universe, for example, that could have happened, and potentially the money that they'd spent would have either only just been made back or they may have even been in the red. So... It is always a risk to push a sequel for a game, but if you don't take risks, then you don't get success. So I kind of agree, but I kind of disagree with Ono's um, thing. Now, obviously, it's not his uh, rule, it's Capcom's, but still, I can see their logic. You know, you need to draw the line somewhere. I just think maybe maybe not make it such a stringent line, like, oh, if it doesn't sell too many, and that's it. No, not having any of it. It's tough to say because, of course, I'm not a video game developer. I'm not the one having to put millions of dollars on the line. So it's easy for me to sit here and say these things. But I just think that we'd have more interesting games if people were comfortable with taking more risk and if games didn't cost so much to make. So what do you guys think? Do you think Capcom has the right of it and that, well, 2 million units is a reasonable baseline? Or even if it is a reasonable baseline, do you agree with me and think that, well, you know, if you see potential for a series, if the feedback is generally good, but perhaps it wasn't well marketed enough, or there was sort of a, a bug that put people off buying it or whatever, it might be worth trying again for the second game and then seeing if it does better. And if not, then maybe then you can reconsider. But if you don't try, you'll just never know. That's my opinion. I just think that sometimes it's not always the game that means it doesn't sell well. For example, Okami, one of my favourite games of all time, is an absolute classic and one of the best games on the PS2. But on its original re release, it sold pretty poorly because, well, the marketing for it was shit. So it had nothing to do with the fact that the game wasn't any good. In fact, it's a very good game. It has its problems, sure, but it's a very good game overall and it didn't sell well because the marketing for it was very poorly done. So just another example there that there's more to consider than just the game if you look at all the factors 
then you know two million units should not just be the fact by itself if you get what i mean as i said though do let me know your thoughts below and i'll see you next time